grateful for that. With that, I'm going to introduce Sean, who is the president of Diaspo Care. I'll just let you take it from there, Sean. All right, thank you very much. Um, this is a pretty exciting topic today. Um, there's a few things that I'm getting more excited about. Healthcare, I've spent my entire career, 25 years, in healthcare and healthcare technology. Uh, my journey through Africa actually goes back even longer than that. Uh, I was at the University of Minnesota, where I did my senior year in Tunisia. Um, and that led me to a number of different uh, initiatives in healthcare in Africa that we'll be talking about today. Um, and so, something that's very exciting about investing in Africa is investing in Africa right now is very, it's at, we're at the bottom of that hockey stick. So here I'm pitching to a lot of different investors and, and Thank you for helping me refine my pitch. Imagine if you were investing in China 20 years ago. You know, imagine if you were putting money in Brazil. Imagine if you got that window where you invested in, in early startups in India. Well, that's where we are right now. Uh, and our pitch today talks about a fintech platform that I think will resonate very easily with all of you, pretty much anyone that's ever used Amazon. Um, or, but something that's a little bit different is a lot of us have never had to take care of a loved one that is tens of thousands of, of miles away. So let's pop to the next slide. Now, the, uh, the diaspora. Yeah, thanks. You did it. All right. Uh, the diaspora. Uh, these are folks, uh, you know, since time immemorial, uh, people have moved around this globe searching for a better life, searching for education or a new job. In the United States, we have millions of folks that have joined our country uh, from all around the world, professionals oftentimes, educated, uh, physicians, engineers, but they have their family back home, back in the home countries, and they're very connected. Their remittances are the lifeblood to their families to pay for their healthcare expenses. But there's a big problem. Pop to the next slide. The money that's sent home oftentimes to take care of a sick loved one that may be going through an acute problem or dealing with a chronic disease. Those funds are all too often pulled away by other social obligations that that individual, their mom, their aunt, their grandfather, has within their community. Those members will sacrifice their own health to give those re precious remittances to their neighbor whose kid needed to have school books or their cousin whose power is getting turned off. And those sacrifices, those many sacrifices, ultimately lead to poor health outcomes and death. Next slide. So there's a host of problems, and our FinTech platform is super easy to understand. Uh, instead of using a traditional MoneyGram or Western Union to bulk ship a big bunch of money over to the African continent, we have developed a FinTech platform that works with the mobile wallets all over the continent. This is the way that all the money gets done over there, which is one of the reasons why I love working in technology and healthcare uh, uh, over in Africa and connecting it to payment systems here in the United States, like credit cards and banks that everyone is really familiar with. But instead of throwing a whole bunch of money to a dark hole, they're able to target micropayments going directly to the health service provider uh, to make sure the money doesn't end up in, in spent the wrong way. Plus, our network of vetted uh, of healthcare practitioners ensure that we have the highest quality. So this is a, a little bit of an eye chart, but it really under, gets you to around all of the different problems and how we are solving them in our exciting FinTech platform. Traditionally, they have no control or no visibility, no traceability in where that money goes. But inside our mobile app, very simple mobile app, they're able to control exactly how much and when and under what circumstances that money is used. Tr tr uh, traditionally, there's a big fee. You know, you can send a, a wire, just a minimum wire, you're going to get like a $45 fee. Maybe sometimes if you're lucky, you might only have a $25 fee. So what do they do? I mean, I'm going to make a count. I'm going to send 500 bucks, even if that medication was only $2.50. But we have almost immediate transaction latency, while most old fashioned ways of doing it, not only do we have to send it to a brick and mortar location where someone has to go pick it up, but it could take 
three or four business days to clear. And if your loved one is struggling with an acute illness, that's absolutely unacceptable. Uh, counterfeit medications. This is a big problem where in some areas of Africa, over 20% of the medications are, are counterfeit. But it goes on and on. Um, and ultimately, in our network, and I'm going to speed this up a little bit, um, we have a full featured uh, 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 list of providers. And let's go to the next slide because we get a little bit more into that. So what are our barriers to scale? And why am I here trying to raise some money? We already have a product, the market. We've had it out there for two years. And we have great traction on the supply side. Because imagine, you know, we could, my team, we've got a 10-person team in Nairobi. They can walk into any uh, dentist, clinic, uh, 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 pharmacy, and say, hey, how would you like to use a free app where you're able to get access to payers that you don't have? Not a problem. We, we're signing up people by the thousands on that side. But back home, the diaspora is my perfect uh, customer base. They have generally you know, middle to upper income individuals highly educated, involved in their communities, but what don't they have? They don't have time. They don't have time to set up an app. They don't have time to network their 20, 30, 40 family members and their extended family network back home onto that app. So it has been a real barrier. People love our app, and, but they'll sign up and they never use it. Secondarily, we now have um, uh, pharmacists, clinics, outpatient, inpatient, dental, telemedicine, a number of different insurance products. When we first started this, we were the pharmacy company. And a lot of our users don't know that we now have a huge uh, product offering. So this is where we're here today. So go to the next slide. I'm raising money for a call center. So this is what we need to take it to the next level. Uh, and this call center, you see the bullet point right there, $117,000 gives me a call center that will hit all of our revenue targets. And this is money that is, has a huge impact. Unlike other Bitcoin boondoggles that I'm sure you've, you've had to listen to, when you put money in diaspora care for my call center, you'll know that every dollar that you spend is unlocking healthcare for people back home. Because our call center does care coordination. This is something I'm very familiar with in my 25 years at Opta. For that care coordination, having a call center that can connect all the different services for that member means that with a simple subscription, the diaspora is able to have everything taken care of. Next slide. We're also raising money for our concierge nurses because that's a big thing that people need. Hey, could someone just go check in on my mom? Could someone bring a medication to my mom? Could someone go there and do look at that thing on her arm? I'm really worried about it. We have telemedicine, we actually have two of the largest telemedicine providers in Kenya. But my gosh, imagine trying to set up Auntie uh, without someone to go to the house. This is what we're asking for 156K, that's a year. And that's thousands of people that are going to have high quality health care. So let's wrap it up. Um, what do we got here? Actually, I'm going to call the presentation. If that, if that doesn't move you, then, uh, <laughs> then we haven't had enough coffee yet. Yeah. Open it up for questions. Yeah, go ahead. Is this going to be translated to different languages? Common languages now? Yeah, and that is, a, that is a big challenge, actually. We also have uh, operations in Kenya, uh, many in Kenya, but also Nigeria and Ghana. And in Ghana, there's many different native dialects. Although everyone speaks English, we actually been recording our testimonials that we put out on YouTube, you can see them in the very common native languages um, to be able to reach uh, those individuals. So yes, it, it is a, my gosh, uh, a big challenge. And it comes down to authenticity. Unless you speak people's languages, you're not taken seriously. Other questions? Are you structured as a B Corp, an LLC, a CE, or nonprofit? How are you structured? That's a great question. We have two different ways. One, we have a C Corp, which is Diaspora Care. Diaspora Care owns all of the IP, the technology, and the operations. About a year ago, we formed Diaspora Cause as an adjacent not for profit. Because many times when I would pitch to people, they would say, You're really early stage. Sorry, I, I don't 
not comfortable investing money in your company, but I want to I want to see the good work that you do. And because we've created a mechanism that other charities can funnel money through our payments platform down to charities in Africa and have that traceability and fine grain control. That that is where we launched I have pause, and that's been extreme, extremely uh, exciting. It is also hitting that on the same. Doing the same thing. Oh really? What's been your experience? Um, most of our funding to date, last six years, has come originated from foundations, and that's been through to us as revenue. But now, the nonprofit is pursuing its own grants. Oh, excellent! No, I think we should continue to talk more because that's that's exactly what I think they're going to end up doing too. Other questions? I think I saw one over here. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I just. No, I can see is there a great need in what you're talking about there, and because uh, I'm only 86 years old, you know, and I need some care. But uh, you did a good job, a uh, good job presenting. If you want another job? I could hire you. <laughs> oh, I love it. This is a uh, if I could actually get paid to do this. <laughs> when did you get started in this business? Why? Oh gosh, yeah. Um, you know, my grandfather. Um, was the, the greatest generation. Um, he went off to fight in World War II and came back on the GI Bill and was educated first in his family um, to get a college education and grew to be the uh, head of it, uh, Utah State University's agriculture department. So he was one of those people working on the Green Revolution that really moved us from 1 billion people up to 7.5 billion people. That was a food and medicine revolution. And looking at his uh, as a scientist, he inspired me that, that we in the technology field can do really good things if we put our heart to it. And I saw all the things that he did in South America, Asia, and ultimately his last stop was in Somalia. Um, and that really bit me really hard that I wanted to follow in his footsteps. I just had an idea. It would help to have photos of people. Because I think emotionally it would really pull people in, you know, just to see faces. Yeah, no, that's really good feedback. Yeah, and I've seen that work really, really well, especially when, frankly, it's not a white guy talking about Africa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, have, I have to ask one last question. What's your revenue model on the, the forefront side? Correct. So we're a double sided platform, just like an Amazon or, or, uh, or eBay. So we have uh, fees that we can charge on both sides of that double-sided platform. Um, currently, we're subsidizing the payer uh, in order because that's where our adoption is going. So we collect a small fee at the um, at the supply side, and we also have FX, but um, timing the movement of, of funds, especially in Nigeria. It's you can if you do it right, you can actually more than cover your costs. And ultimately, it's a subscription service. It works really, really well. That, that kind of it fits perfectly with these busy people in the diaspora that says, here, here's 10 bucks, just please take care of my money. More questions? Then what we should have done this earlier, and I apologize, we're going to give every entrepreneur deserves a standing ovation. So we're going to do that right now. Please stand up. Maybe give it a box. <laughs>